Maryland games, and he said, when I got into the profession, this program was always in the back of my head as maybe a place I might like to end up. West Virginia kicks, Maryland receives into the end zone. Jeremiah Wilson brings it out. Hit at the 25, leans forward down uh, close to the 29. So Maryland in their all-black uniforms, led by the sophomore from Kernsville, North Carolina, Danny O'Brien. Last week, 348 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception, an interception that he's well aware of he should not have thrown. That one was picked off in the end zone early on in that game versus Miami. Quick strike to Kevin Dorsey. Short pickup on first will set up second and long. Second and nine, and the officials step up and stop this one. David Meggett, the tailback behind O'Brien. Great protection, short little drop, completion, cross the 35, maybe right at the 35. George Wright with the tackle after the pickup of five. It's an example of what Danny O'Brien has done so well in this offense. He looks downfield, see if, see if there's anything available. If it's not, he checks it down, keeps you in a positive third down situation. Third down conversions were an issue in week one for Maryland. Here's their first third down of the game. Hit as he unloaded, incomplete. O'Brien took a licking from Terrence Garvin. Pat Miller. In the secondary with the defensive breakup, so a three and out for Maryland. Danny O'Brien feeling the pressure, but stands in there, still tries to make a play. But this was really tight coverage by West Virginia. Pat Miller was a third down nickelback last year. This is his first year in a starting role and off to a good start today. The dynamic Tavon Austin back to return the punt. You will see a lot of Austin tonight. Low punt, Austin will not return this one, and it takes a Maryland roll. And stopped at the 25. The junior from Miami, Geno Smith. Well, you just look at him, Danny, and he looks like an athlete. Physically, he's impressive. He makes good decisions with the ball. And you're looking at both of these quarterbacks, and Danny O'Brien and Geno Smith, they both look similar, and they run similar offenses. West Virginia offensively has gotten off to very slow starts in each of their opening games. This was a focus for Dana Holgerson this week. Start quick and have intelligent plays that get you early yards. And there's an early completion and a tackle back to the line of scrimmage at best for West Virginia, Joe Villano tracking back for the tackle. You know, Dana Holgerson talked about their slow starts, that he wanted to give Geno and this offense some easy, simple plays to kind of gain their confidence early. Second and ten for the Mountaineers. A nice cut by McCartney after the reception, but again, very little. So far, two easy completions for Geno, and this is a large part. They supplement the running game by the quick passing game. Pickup of 11, Dana Holgerson in his first year as head coach at West Virginia, was the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma State last year. First first down of the game for either side. Quick strike, another completion. That one to Devon Brown. You know, both these offenses, they're very tempo, rhythm-oriented. And I think what you're seeing here is Dana Holgerson helping Geno Smith and this offense find their rhythm. There's nothing better for your confidence than getting a few completions early. Second and short for West Virginia. Smith from the shotgun. Fakes the give, rolls to his right. Well defended by Maryland. Smith throws it up and out of bounds. 
Andre Monroe with the pressure on Smith, and that'll bring up third and short. One of the things that's unique to this West Virginia offense is they're able to run play action from the shotgun. They do some, some run game from back there, and they're able to suck up those linebackers and try to go over the top like they did there. Unfortunately, the protection wasn't there and had to throw it away. First down for West Virginia as they cross midfield. Sean Alston, the ball carrier, 220 pound junior. Running game has been somewhat absent for Dana Holgerson, and he is into this one early on. Shifts to the right of Smith. Fake the give to Bowie. Stedman Bailey with the reception across the 40, just side the 35. The bubble screen is such a big part of both these offenses in preparation, watching these. I ran out of ink when I was writing down how many times they ran them. You just get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Let them do the work. Stedman Bailey gets the opportunity that time. Make the defense tackle them in open space. Another first down for West Virginia. Bowie the give. Across the 30, loose ball. Maryland will recover inside their own 20. Cameron Chisholm with the recovery. Matt Robinson with the tackle to force the ball. Maryland defense forced four turnovers in their opener versus Miami, and they get a quick one here. And West Virginia has not coughed it up all year long. Andrew Bowie puts it on the ground. Dana Holgerson has been frustrated with that running game. I think his frustration is only going to continue to mount with plays like that. So the first turnover of the season for the Maryland goes right to the ground game. David Meggett with a healthy pickup on first down. Ian Smith with the tackle as we go back to the fumble by Bowie. Megan in and out of his hands. Third and three up now for O'Brien and the Terps. Jeremiah Wilson, the tailback. Right, nice block, and that'll go for a first down across the 35. Terry Boykins, one of the two receivers that is moving into the starting lineup due to the suspensions to McCree and Tyler. Darwin Cook with the tackle. And just like we saw West Virginia's offense going to short, simple passes, very much the same for Danny O'Brien and Maryland. Another bubble pass for them. Complete, just short of the midfield. That'll be another first down. Kevin Dorsey with the grab. There's the type of throw that has people raving about Danny O'Brien. From one hash to the far side of the field on a 12-yard out, really impressive. Maryland offense in a rhythm right now. O'Brien across the middle, a little too low. Kevin Dorsey, the intended target. Danny O'Brien's got a little be careful with that ball. He went past his progression, waited on a little bit long, and almost had a completion, but a little dangerous over the middle. O'Brien, three for five for 20 yards thus far. Goes back to the air, and that one well off target. Ended receiver, so third and ten now for Maryland. Three wideouts to the left. A 
press coverage at the bottom. See if it takes a shot. Flag on the play. Dorsey taken down as he was running his route. Pass interference. Defense number 23, 15 yard penalty, first down. Broderick Jenkins, the sophomore from Fort Myers with the infraction. Danny O'Brien recognized tight man to man coverage, went over, signaled to Kevin Dorsey, said, hey, let's take a shot, work that speed. Kevin Dorsey had the huge catch against the Hurricanes in week one, trying to go back to the well. To the ground, Meggett. Pickup of six for the senior from Clinton, Maryland. Meggett led the team in rushing last year with 720 yards, a career best for him. 5.7 yards per carry last year for him. They're expecting more from him this season, though, and he'll get another carry. Cuts left, past the 30, 25, first down, lowers his head and out of bounds. Pat Miller with the hit for the first down for Meggett. This is an area of the field that was an emphasis for Gary Crow, the offensive coordinator from Maryland. Want to make sure they finish off drives. Here's a look at David Meggett, show, showcasing his speed a little bit, getting to the outside. This is a great opportunity for them to take a shot at the end zone. Tight end is hit immediately. Matt Furstenberg blown up by Keith Tandy. That's one way to break up the bubble screen. You get very aggressive with it, you come up, you beat one blocker and you're able to tackle from loss. The thing is, Maryland knows that. They'll take a shot over the top. Bottom of the screen, there's the bubble pass. Tandy recognizes it right from the get-go and comes up and makes a great open field tackle. Second and 12 after the loss of two. Meggett blown up again. And a late flag is thrown into the pile. Maybe a high hit there. Naj A. Good laying the lumber. Well, obviously, Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, saw a lot of the same game tape that I did. This team very prepared for the bubble screen today. Dennis Hennigan, your referee. And here's the call. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Here's a look. Daniel O'Brien swinging back to Megan. And boy, I don't... You know, I mean, it's football. It's a rough game. I mean, that seems to me like a bang-bang play. Sometimes I wonder if these officials are just, they want to go play seven-on-seven seven flat, maybe they should do that somewhere else. Uh, a four-inch differential between Good and Megan. So it may be hard to not hit the head. DJ Adams with the run there, just short of the 10. Another look at the hit. Here's a look at Nigel Good coming up. I mean, yeah, he hits him in the head, but it's a it's a tackle. I mean, if you get guys who try to readjust their head position, you're going to get guys hurt. Second and eight for the Turks. Very little there for Adams. And good with the tackle. Tyler Anderson helping him as well. Once again, Maryland in week one was faced with a couple of critical red zone opportunities. They dropped a touchdown through an interception, another one. It's a big third down for them to walk away, not only just with points, but to try to get a touchdown. And the West Virginia D holds Dorsey with the reception. And the kick team will come on out for Maryland. Nick Ferrara comes on, had 14 points versus Miami, including a 32-yard field goal, which proved to be the game winner. This from 25. Three nothing, Maryland. Now the turnover results in three points for Maryland. West Virginia back on offense when we return. ESPNU College Football brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card with double miles on every purchase, every day. 
13 play drive as the red zone woes continue for Maryland. They are able to punch in a field goal, but Gary Croton and Danny O'Brien were hoping for a touchdown. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell here with you on the campus of the University of Maryland. A lot of West Virginia fans here in attendance as well. A lot of blue and gold in the stands. As West Virginia, 2-0. Up to number 18 in the land and a big one this Saturday and a huge game looming next Saturday in Morgantown as number three LSU will come a call in. Should West Virginia win today? Very good chance that our friends at College Game Day will be in West Virginia next week. You know, and Dana Holgerson said that he's been warning his team about looking forward to next week, but it's easier said than done. I mean, everybody all offseason has been talking about that game. We have to take care of business first. Tavon Austin, Stedman Bailey back deep to return the kick for West Virginia. It'll be Austin at his five. To the 20, trying to get outside. Loose ball out of bounds. It'll stay with West Virginia the second time. West Virginia has lost the ball here in the opening quarter. Adrian Coxon with the tackle for Maryland. Tavon Austin is a dynamic threat as a return man. You have got to secure that football towards the end of the run. And a flag snuck on the field, and that'll push West Virginia back even further. Holding on West Virginia, so they will start it from their 11. Make it 12. So Dana Holgerson's crew backed up. Geno Smith, four of five so far for 31 yards. Austin in motion, the give to Roberts. Gets outside and pushed out of bounds at the 16. Matt Robinson with the hit as we take a look at our impact players. Tavon Austin, we just saw him on the return, but he could make an impact if they get ball, the ball in his hands as a wide receiver. Dynamic threat, and of course, across from him is Devon Brown, who last week had a big game. 109 receptions yards, career high for him. Second and six. Another quick strike, completion to Bailey. And that'll move the sticks. See, the thing both these offenses do, so look at Maryland's Joe Volano, who of course had the big fumble recovery return for a touchdown against Miami. He needs a huge day today too. And then Kenny Tate, who is the superstar, he plays the star hybrid position for them, but he needs to have a big game too. Now Roberts went in motion. Three wideouts to the right for Smith. Nice protection over the middle. Takes what he gets. Austin, the another first down for West Virginia. This Maryland defense, Danny, playing without starting will linebacker Darren Drakeford today out due to an ankle injury. So Demetrius Hartsfield had to move from Mike out to Will. True freshman, or rather Richard freshman, Lauren Gorey playing at the middle linebacker spot. Another completion. Another one to Austin. Getting outside across the 40, puts on the brakes, and then thrown out of bounds at the 39. And another first down for the Mountaineers. Well, that's what they want to do. They want to get the ball in his hands. Great way to do it, throw him a quick bubble screen, get good blocking downfield in front of him by another receiver, and let him break tackles. That's where he excels. Pick up of 20 for Austin, who's now on the sideline. Smith to Urban, low one caught. Tyler Urban, the senior from North Huntington, Pennsylvania. Hartsfield with the tackle. Urban a big target, 6'5", 251. Geno Smith, the big quarterback, 6'3", 214. Second and seven. Five wideouts, three to the left of Smith. He looks right. Beautiful ball and completion. McCartney with the grab. 
That is a high-level throw from Smith. The thing that impressed me most, Rob, was the amount of trust that Geno Smith showed in Avon McCartney. And that's great coverage, but the defender has his back towards the quarterback, never sees the ball coming. Geno Smith trusts that McCartney will make a catch for him. Pickup of 14. The sticks move again. First and 10 from the 21. Smith will run it this time. Stutter step at the 20, lowers his head, will be down at about the 19 after a pickup of, we'll give him two. Gorey with the tackle. You know, Rob, when I watch these offenses, I'm jealous. As an old quarterback, these offenses are very quarterback friendly. As long as you make good decisions, you get the ball in the right guy's hands, they'll make a lot of, they'll make you look good. You get them to these fast guys, get them on the edge, they'll turn little passes into big plays. It's quarterback friendly, it's receiver friendly, it's at athletic friendly and it's good for recruiting as well as both programs say these offenses have opened up a lot of players eyes they'll go to the ground Roberts nothing there he'll lose a couple Kenny Tate the all ACC first teamer with the tackle yet again West Virginia has struggled in that running game they haven't been able to run it all year and the one thing about Holgerson he will bail on it he'll just start chucking it around the field See Maryland getting outside. That's Kenny Tate, one of our impact players, making a big tackle for a loss. Loss of five will bring up third and 13. Smith lobs one for the end zone. Late flag comes out. Might be on Cameron Chisholm. Intended for Ivan McCartney. Chisholm had the fumble recovery earlier in this one. We just talked about the trust factor. Cameron Chisholm is running step for step with McCartney, but Geno Smith trusts. Pass interference, defense number 22. First down. A lot of that contact is sort of incidental towards the end of the play. Coach Edsel saying, hey, that ball was not catchable. It was out of bounds. But I think if you look at the trajectory, there was a chance for it. But obviously, he's frustrated. But a lot of times when you have a shot at the end zone, you take it. The worst thing that happens is an incomplete. Best case, it's a touchdown. And even another a good case is you get a, a pass interference. See the ball coming down. If he doesn't get contact, I think he could catch that ball. West Virginia has been outscored in the first quarter 10 to 3 through two games. Trying to get their first touchdown in the first quarter of this season. Smith. A huge rebound off the pads of Woods. That one right between the numbers, but J.D. Woods cannot bring it in. And those are the types of plays that really stall this offense. You have to rely on guys simply playing pitch and catch. If you get an incompletion, it puts you in second and longs, which they don't like to be in. They want to keep you in manageable situations. Second and goal, Roberts behind Smith. Three wide outs to the left. And they'll go to the ground, Roberts. And Roberts will have a touchdown for West Virginia. A nine yard touchdown run. Their first touchdown in the first quarter this year. That's got to be a huge boost for this West Virginia offense. The left guard, Jeff Braun, locked up man-to-man. -man, great block. Bernard Roberts able to establish that running game that Dana Holgerson really wanted to get going early. Tyler Bittenkert with the extra point, 7-3 West Virginia. Ten-play drive results in seven points. And Bernard Roberts, the true freshman, with his first career touchdown. Dana Holgerson and the Mountaineers with the lead here in the first quarter, 7-3 over Maryland. Very impressive, orchestrating it. 10 plays, 88 yards over the course of four minutes and 12 seconds. Smith thus far 
9 of 11 for 94 yards. You know, the thing that's impressive to me is the way they're able to sustain drives with the passing game. I mean, it takes a very accurate passer with high completion percentage to be able to do that. I mean, you're, when you hand off the ball and you run it, you know, that's the old school football. But what they've really done is replace that with these bubble screens and quick passing game. And I love it. I mean, it's fun to watch. You get guys on the outside, you force the defense to make open field tackles. Holderson telling us this week about his quarterback, Geno Smith, saying, I need him to feel like he doesn't have to do everything. Trust the system. It's going to lead you to a wonderful place. And a big part of the system is being patient and knowing when to take your shots. Jeremiah Wilson, Justice Pickett, back for Maryland. It'll be Wilson from the seven. 20, 25, cuts left to the 30, still on his feet, taken down at the 32. And that's where Maryland will take it over when we return. The Turks down 7-3, late stages of the first quarter. Road test weekend rolls on from College Park, Maryland. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell, glad you're with us for this ACC on ESPN showdown. Well, ACC Big East showdown in a battle between two of the top quarterbacks in the nation, Danny O'Brien and Geno Smith, which conveniently leads us to our Twitter question of the day. Head on over to twitter.com slash ESPN. We'd love to hear your response as to who will win the quarterback duel between Smith and O'Brien. O'Brien through the air, that one batted down in the air and complete. Falls into the hands of Pickett, who's tackled at 25 for a huge loss. That is the worst feeling as a quarterback when that ball tips in the air and it is hanging up there for seemingly forever. Great job by Julian Miller, batting his big old mitt on it. Justice P Pickett able to get it, almost would have been better off letting that ball hit the ground. Two freshmen should have just let that one drop. So second and 16. That one a little behind Furstenberg. made a really nice grab to pull that one in. Pick up of eight yards. Furstenberg had four receptions for 68 yards in that tight end position in the victory over Miami. So Maryland's receivers looked a little too close. Not the correct spacing on that route. Interception return. The junior from Baltimore taking it to the house. His first career interception. Bittenkirk makes it 14-3. 14, 14 unanswered Mountaineer points. And a lot of times when you have a play that takes a long time to develop, you can see the quarterback. You see Danny O'Brien looking around there. He got off his progressions. West Virginia, Terrence Garvin saw him reading his eyes the whole time. You see his feet kind of off there. When you see a quarterback get off his hitches, usually you go your first guy, your second guy, your third, and if it's not there, throw it away. There's Geno Smith having a look, cheering on his defense, and Danny O'Brien. See the look of frustration there. You know, both these quarterbacks, you try to do too much and you get yourselves in trouble. I and mean, we just talked about all you have to do is make good decisions with the ball and get them in the right guy's hands. If it's not there, throw it away. You can come back and live another down. Second interception thrown this season by O'Brien. Wilson and Pickett. Back deep to receive. 
will be picking. Across the 20 and tripped up. Dives forward and will be marked down at the 25. Monday, Jesse Palmer and David Pollock provide an engaging and interactive look at the past week's action and will help set the scene for the upcoming week's big games. And there are some big ones next week. Notre Dame at Pittsburgh, Arkansas at Alabama, and LSU at this West Virginia team. The Palmer and Pollock Show on ESPNU Mondays, 1 and 9 Eastern College Football lives here every day on ESPNU. Megget in the backfield behind O'Brien is under center. The give to Megget, trying to find a hole to his right, and he is bottled up and set backwards. You know, Rob, this is where you test your mettle as a quarterback. You just threw an interception for a touchdown. you got to go right back on the field. No time to talk about it. No time to talk to your coordinator. You have to go right back to work. Really interesting to see how Danny O'Brien responds. They're going to call that a loss of one. O'Brien back on the shotgun. Incomplete along the sideline. Kerry Boykins with the reception, but he was out of bounds. Randy Edsel announcing Thursday that McCree and Tyler, two starting wide receivers, will be suspended indefinitely due to a violation of team rules. It's already a position they were a little thin and inexperienced at, and now they are really testing their depth chart. O'Brien, great protection, complete to Meggett, and a flag on the play, Darwin Cook with the tackle. Illegal formation, five players in the backfield offense, penalty is declined. Fourth down. You know, that's another example of a penalty that, that probably is a result of guys having to play that aren't used to practicing. They're making their first starts. They're getting their first opportunity. You know, you saw a couple plays earlier. There was bad spacing between the wide out and the tight end. And it's guys that are forced into action when they're not ready. I mean, you can't understate the impact of losing those two receivers has had on this game. Farara will punt, as well as place kick and kick off. Low punch, bounces at the 45 and then rolls inside the 35 and down at the 30. So Geno Smith comes back on offense after that 41-yard punt, and here's what Geno has done. Well, Geno has been doing what he does best, and that's spread the ball around to a lot of his weapons, making short, crisp passes, giving guys accurate balls so they can turn up the field and make Maryland defenders miss. And Maryland better watch out because they do not want to get to a shootout with this West Virginia team. Gino had 371 yards passing last week in their victory over Norfolk State. He's at 94 yards already on 9 of 11 passing. Roberts, who had to get another carry, pickup of two. You know, the thing that's interesting, you talk about the chess match of a defensive coordinator versus an offense. and. Right now, Todd Bradford's got to decide. Does he want to come up and take away those little routes and try to pressure Geno Smith? But if he does, he becomes susceptible to a deep ball. Let's see if West Virginia can sneak in one last play here in the first quarter. And there's their answer. <laughs> Offense and defense doing it on the scoreboard for West Virginia as they lead 14 to three after one. Maryland, unbeaten at 1-0, but Dana Holgerson trying to get his side to 3-0. West Virginia handling this road test weekend very well through the first quarter as they're on top of Maryland by 11. Both these programs with first-year head coaches, Randy Edsel to the left, Dana Holgerson to the right, Edsel made his name as head coach of the University of Connecticut. Holgerson making his name as an outstanding offensive coordinator at Texas Tech, Houston, and most recently, Oklahoma State. These two schools, not the only 
programs making changes up top, some very significant programs making some moves, and here's what these guys have done thus far. Luke Fickle and Brady Hoke, both unbeaten in the Big Ten. There's Dana Holgerson at 2-0, with LSU coming into town next Saturday. All them faced with Tess. Will Muschamp, Florida Gators, going to take on Tennessee at the Swamp. All of them faced with some big challenges. First and ten, rather second and eight for Geno Smith and company. Three wide outs to the right, two to the left for Smith. Smith, look at this protection. Buys himself a little time and then a completion across midfield. It's Austin to the races. Austin across the 20 and then finally pushed out of bounds. Matt Robinson saving the touchdown. Pickup of 47 yards, Smith to Austin. There is nothing more frustrating for a defensive secondary than to have to sit back there and wonder, how long do I have to cover these guys? Maryland's defensive line had no clue how to get to Geno Smith, and Tavon Austin is just buying time, getting open, and then it just becomes playground ball. Just find a guy, find a way to get him the ball. Three grounds already for Austin. Give to Roberts. Look at that spin across the 20. Oh, could have been a loss, and he ends up picking up three yards. John Roberts had the touchdown earlier. You can see the shakes he's got. Little spin move, and if you're Maryland, you've got to make sure that you wrap him up. All of these West Virginia offensive guys. Take the gift to Roberts. Smith buying time, rolling out of the pocket, and just throws that one away. Smith has a nice ability to keep plays alive with his feet, something that Dana Holgerson brought up to us when we spoke to him this week. He said, the best I've ever coached at doing it, Case Keenum at the University of Houston. And it just shows you, you don't have to run a 4-4 to be considered a you know a good guy in the pocket. You just have to show that mobility in that tackle to tackle box that so many people like to refer to as the hurricane in the middle of the eye of the storm. Third and seven in the red zone. All the Mountaineers. Looking for Bailey and incomplete. Chisholm there to defend. And Tyler Bittenkirk. And the field goal unit will come on. Cameron Chisholm, bump coverage, man-to-man, -man, runs with him all the way. Geno Smith trying to take a chance at that back shoulder throw. Just a little off target. Bitten Kurt, third year as the starting kicker. This one will be from 35. He's four for five this season with his field goals and make it five for six. So the lead extends to 14. Older series on the road, but up 17-3. Maryland quarterback Danny O'Brien, 9 of 15, 38 yards, and an interception that was returned for a touchdown. Maryland last year committing 15 turnovers, tied for fifth fewest in FBS. They've had some issues early on already, Dan. Well, today they've just struggled. David Maggot had a drop pass, easy, easy pitch and catch, just dropped it. Another poor throw by Danny O'Brien, and of course, the most costly interception was to Terrence Garvin, who returned it for the touchdown. Anytime you get up seven points, just really puts you behind the eight ball. Pick it at about the 17. Across the 30, taken down. They'll mark that one at the 31. There's a look at Maryland's drive chart thus far. Punt, interception, field goal, punt. I mean, a lot of the talk coming in here was West Virginia would be the team that might overlook this looking toward LSU, but Maryland so far looks like they have not come to show up yet. They need to respond. Bruce Irvin with the hit.
Back to the ground. Megan forced outside, gets around the corner. Short of a first down, they'll mark him out just beyond the 40-yard line, so that'll bring up a third and short for Maryland. Again, third down conversions and red zone offense has been a bit of an issue for the Terps. Best for Maryland to see if they can grind this out and get a first down when they need it. The give to Adams, and he's got a first down and a little bit more across midfield and out at the 44. DJ Adams, the sophomore from Norcross, Georgia, did not play versus. Miami, a one-game suspension for a violation of team rules, but he's back today, and there's a pickup of 17. Both these teams, they use that, you know, air attack, and a lot of times there's a lot of finesse, but sometimes it's good to line up and just show that you're capable of getting those tough yards. O'Brien, that one may be picked off. He really tried to force that one in, and it is. Darwin Cook with the interception. Ill advised pass from O'Brien. That was really a tight window that Danny O'Brien tried to squeeze it in there. Like we talked about earlier, just got to move on through your progressions. You got three defenders around your guy. Get to your next one, move on, throw it away, or tuck it and get back to the line of scrimmage. It's West Virginia team, Darwin Cook there, making a great break on the ball. O'Brien's last four attempts have resulted in two interceptions. They give to Roberts around the left side across the 40 down at the 41 after a pickup of two for the freshman from Washington, D.C., David Mackle, the sophomore from Baltimore with the tackle. We talked about the quarterbacks at the outset, and O'Brien is losing this battle right now. Yeah, the biggest thing that jumps out is the two interceptions. Those will absolutely kill your team. Brian Clark now to the left of Smith. Quick strike to the right, a little spin by McCartney, but he's wrapped up immediately. It's interesting how many different ways they can run a variation of a bubble screen. That time they ran it out of a play action pass with a two set, two guys in the backfield that can run and spread it with five wide outs. They can virtually do it from any type of personnel unit. Dustin Garrison, the true freshman from Perland, Texas, sent in at running back by Holgerson. He's trying to get the attention of the officials and they're looking for a timeout and they will get it. for West Virginia. Maryland started off with a 3-0 lead and then 17 straight points. And he's not whistling for the dog, he's whistling for the ref. Hey guys, over here. Team seven, they lead. Thank you, Dari, a battle of two Clemson trailing it happened both games this year and rallying for victories. You saw what Auburn did last week at home, a dramatic victory over then number 25 Mississippi State, who fell on Thursday night at home to LSU. Third and long for West Virginia. Had to reset the play clock there. Smith from the shotgun. Hit. Loose ball, loose helmet, recovered by Maryland. And that will be a Terrapin ball. Bradley Johnson with the fumble recovery. Maryland's defensive coordinator, Todd Bradford, not 
well known for being an incredible blitzer, but he dialed it up at exactly the right time. Kenny Tate, the bottom of your screen coming, attracted a lot of offensive linemen. The pressure actually came from the backside where Geno Smith couldn't see it. Get a hand on that football, and that is a huge turnover for Maryland right now. Third fumble of the game on West Virginia, the second that they lost. Coach Holgerson wants to say he was in the act of throwing, trying to say it was an incomplete pass. He may have a case here. Well, he's always going to make that case. Certainly. <laughs> he's selling it with passion at a minimum. Ruling on the field is a fumble. Let's see what happens with Geno Smith's arm. There's the Maryland arm. defender, and I think that ball is cocked and ready to go. I don't think he's got it moving forward yet. I think that ball will stand as a fumble. I can see where you make the argument that David Mackle getting that hand on it. That's what you want to do, and that's a dangerous spot to be in as a quarterback. Can't feel that pressure from the backside. Gino may have taken a hit to the head as well. He has helmet knocked off. Right there and then there. Kenny Tate delivering that blow that actually knocked his helmet off. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. And I mean, you can see Dana Holgerson making his case because he was getting ready to throw and his arms started to move forward, but he had not got the ball moving forward where it could be considered a pass yet. He was just in that cocked position Great job of stripping it, forcing the turnover. So O'Brien and Maryland take over. Megat. Maybe a yard. Now this Maryland offense, they've got to capitalize on this field position and this opportunity to shift the momentum. Good with the tackle. Maryland quickly lines back up. Tony Logan getting the start at wide receiver. At the top of your screen, a very talented punt returner. They haven't thrown it to him yet today. Meggett going up the middle. Good with the tackle. This will be short of a first down, but it will be third and manageable. Third down, four yards to go from the 29. DJ Adams, the big power back. Make that Jeremiah Wilson and flags all over the place here. False start. Offense number 77, five-yard penalty. Road test weekend with a stop here in Maryland and a big road test for number 18, West Virginia, at 2-0 as they are taking on Maryland. Randy Edsel's team opened up the season with a Labor Day home victory over the University of Miami. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell, glad you're with us. Now a third and nine for Danny O'Brien, last year's ACC Rookie of the Year. He's thrown two picks already. And another handoff. That ball came loose at the very end. Julian Miller wrapping up the runner and very little there on third and long. Very conservative with the play calling, but here I think you look at where they are on the field. This Maryland team is going to go for it because they're kind of in no man's land. It's either a really long kick and you give the other team great field position. I agree with this. I say you take advantage while you're here. They were two for two on fourth down conversions versus Miami. O'Brien, pump fake, incomplete, another helmet on the turf, this one belonging to Dorsey with Maryland, and on downs it'll be turned over to West Virginia, Pat Miller, and Ishmael Banks with the hit. I like the aggressive play calling on fourth ground, but I don't know about the, the play calling on first through third, three runs in a row. Take a look at the last play, trying to get a first down on fourth down. No luck, West Virginia will take over when we return. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell with you here on Road Test Weekend. West Virginia on the road at Maryland and on top by 14. Earlier we asked you our Twitter question of the day, talking about our two quarterbacks. And right now, Geno Smith is winning the quarterback battle handily. You know, even aside from the statistical battle that's going on right now, you just look at Geno Smith, he looks more composed, he looks more comfortable in the pocket. Danny O'Brien, for whatever reason, doesn't look that way right now. And you got to wonder if having two of his best receivers out there isn't affecting his approach to the game. 
We seek your response to our Twitter question of the day. Who's going to win the quarterback duel? A lot of football left to be played, but Smith with a nice early start. And another completion for Smith. This one to McCartney. And he and McCartney played high school ball together in Miramar, Florida. In fact, McCartney, another wideout, Stedman Bailey, all played with Smith at Miramar. There's a pickup of six, Cameron Chisholm with the tackle. So second and four for West Virginia. Intended for Devon Brown and complete. So third and four now for West Virginia. They began the season ranked number 24 in the preseason polls. This week they're up one spot to number 18. Next week they host number three, LSU. Smith. Great reception, wonderful catch and focus by McCartney as he took the hit. Well, Maryland's defense dialed up the same exact blitz that they ran the last time when they forced the fumble. This time, Geno Smith gets good protection, realizes he's got man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, drops a perfectly placed ball over the top of Cameron Chisholm. 36-yard gain. Beautifully placed ball by Smith. Bowie with the run, flag on the play. Matt Robinson with the hit on the freshman from Jacksonville. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face, defense number 72. Penalty is half the distance to the goal, first down. Third penalty of the game on Maryland. Geno Smith showing great touch, dropping it right over Cameron Chisholm. McCartney pulls it in. Those guys have been playing pitch and catch for quite some time, all the way back to Miramar High School. Bowie the tailback behind Smith. He gets the carry across the 10, across the 5. Touchdown, West Virginia! Second rushing touchdown of the afternoon for the Mountaineers. 10-yard touchdown run for Bowie, his first career touchdown. Great look at the blocking up front. Look at that hole. All he has to do is beat one Maryland defender who comes up with a poor, <laughs> poor attempt at a tackle. And Dana Holgerson, this offense had high expectations. They're meeting all those today. Now 24 unanswered points for the road team. Randy Edsel and company trying to get some positive feeling back here on campus. West Virginia having their way with Maryland early on. West Virginia up 21 points on Maryland after that five play drive, covering 67 yards in just a minute nine. Bowie making amends for that fumble, a 10 yard touchdown run, second rushing touchdown of the afternoon for West Virginia. Geno Smith, very effective through the course of this one already. 13 for 18, 182 yards, no picks, no touchdowns. Maryland needs a spark, and they need a nice return here to get this crowd back into it and to give their side some momentum. the 11 and a break and all the way across the 40 is Pickett. Just the return they needed. College football continues right here on ESPNU today. A little bit later, right when we're done, we stay in ACC country. Virginia and North Carolina, two unbeatens at 3.30 Eastern. And then at 7 Eastern, Victor Anderson leads the Louisville Cardinals against Morgan Newton and the Cats. College football lives here on ESPNU. O'Brien from the shotgun, Meggett to his right. O'Brien to Meggett, across the 40 and then out of bounds after a pickup of four yards. 
take a look at the numbers for Louisville and Kentucky. The Wildcats unbeaten Louisville at 1-1, one and one, playing for the Governor's Cup. Just the 24th meeting between these two programs on the football field. Nugget gets the carry after the reception. Casey Vance, the senior from Seneca Rocks, West Virginia, in his third career start with the tackle. And that'll bring up third and a couple here. They really need a first down to give their defense a chance to rest. Last time they were able to establish that physical run presence, see if they can do it again. Adams, the 210 pounder, will be, looks like it may be just a hair short. We'll be very curious to see where they mark this one. That's going to be the difference maker is where do they spot this ball? It's like they got it. And this is a huge drive for Danny O'Brien. We talked before about him having to overcome the adversity. Well, he's going to have to do it here, but a big assist by the ground game, getting that chains, keeping those chains to move. More focus on the running game since O'Brien threw that first interception, a completion to Furstenberger and Garvin with the huge hit and the late flag. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defender 28, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, one thing is clear. These officials are going to make that a point of emphasis in this game. You see the pop pass. Here comes Garvin up to make a hit. And once again, I just see that as a football play. And obviously, Dana Holgerson agrees with me. And it is a bang-bang play. I thought it was a great job of recognizing the quick pass by Terrence Garvin, number 28 for West Virginia, came up and made a play. I'm not sure his neck and head could extend more without falling off after that hit. O'Brien throws that one away as we take another look at the hit laid on Furstenberg. And that is just good timing. That's form tackling. I mean, that's how you would draw it up. If you're giving a clinic, you would teach your kids to tackle like that. I think the neck whip may have kind of <laughs> bought that call for Maryland. 51 penalty yards for West Virginia so far. O'Brien gives it to Pickett. That one was going nowhere from the beginning. Oh. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they ran the zone read there with Danny O'Brien making the decision whether to hand it off or keep it himself. It just looked like it took a long time for him to decide to pull that or give it. And obviously, the, the, all the time he's thinking about it, West Virginia is just pursuing on the football. So third and ten now for Maryland. O'Brien, that one a little low and incomplete. Roderick Jenkson Jenkins there to defend the pass intended for Dorsey. Well, Kevin Dorsey's running a skinny post route. It's very much a timing route, but boy, his head is slow getting around. Looks like he almost was surprised the ball was coming his way, but as a receiver, you have to be ready at any time for that ball. This is almost exactly the last time on the, this point of the field where they went for it on fourth down last time. This time I'm going to set up for points. This will be a 48-yard attempt for Ferrara. His career best is 50. And no good. Wide right, and we send it to the studio. Dari with an update. All right, guys, Auburn-Clemson, as soon as Clemson came back, made it a 14-7 game. Michael Dyer, direct snap, second rushing touchdown of the day. Auburn back up a couple of scores at Death Valley. Yes. 17-game winning streak. Trying to continue their role, the defending national champs. And Randy Edsel and company are going to have some work to do in the locker room at halftime. Across the 35 to the 40, first down. 
A little touch play right there. Looked like uh, some soft volleyball with the give to Austin. I mean, Dana Holgerson is very creative with his play calling. They said they were going to get ways. Here he comes in motion. Watch a little, just a touch pass. That looked like Magic Johnson back in the day. Just a little tip pass to James Worthy. Nice touch by Smith. Best part about it, forward pass. It's a completion, high percentage rate. Pickup of 12. Bowie, the freshman from Jacksonville, sweeping to his left. And right now, Dana Holgerson has this Maryland defense guessing on what's coming next. They've done a great job mixing the play, the play action pass, the run game, and pick up a four, and they are lined up and ready to snap on second and six. They give to Bowie again. And Bowie knocked out at midfield by Chisholm. And if you're Maryland's defense, you got to find time. It's like, hey, when do we make our adjustments? Because they're coming so fast at you. All you have time is just call something base, a base look. Can't get subs in, can't catch your breath. And not a lot of time to get coaching on the sideline due to the ineffectiveness of their offense. Third and short. First down. Sean Alston with a gain of six. Maryland's, Maryland's having trouble getting lined up. Their guys are gassed, trying to get where they should be on the field, and West Virginia's ready to go. Smith to Austin. Breaks one tackle, breaks a second tackle. Able to pick up a couple. Uh, he is so dangerous, the junior from Baltimore. Had a state record 790 points on 123 touchdowns. He scored in his high school career. Was a two-time Maryland consensus. Offensive player of the year won three Class 1A state championships here in the state of Maryland. Smith, complete, McCartney. Short of the first down, Chisholm there with another shove out of bounds. Think about this West Virginia offense, they stretch you on every play. They go sideline to sideline, they force you to tackle inside, they force you to make open tackles outside, and they'll take their shots when they're there. Timeout on the field. Maryland will take it for this third and three. And we send it back to Dari with this break. Dari? All right, guys, thank you. Coming up at the half, ACC getting interest from a couple of Big E schools. We will update the very latest on conference movement possibilities also. Auburn not getting quite the test it expected from Clemson. We will update that and look ahead to the biggest game of the day, Oklahoma and Florida State, guys. Uh, thank you, Dari. You talk about the ACC new members. Uh, a tweet early this morning from our colleague Pat Forty saying that Pittsburgh and Syracuse may be leaving the Big East and heading to the ACC. The Bigs having their way here right now. West Virginia getting points early and often in the first quarter, an interception. Return for a touchdown there by Terrence Garvin, and then they went to the ground. Andrew Bowie, 10-yard touchdown run, and they are up by 21. Big third and three here, though, for West Virginia. Smith picked off, no dropped. Matt Robinson had it in his mitts and lost it. Well, that timeout, I think, made a difference there for Maryland. They were ab they were able to dial up a blitz, which caught Geno Smith a little off guard. He was actually able to try to make a play, but Matt Robinson saw it coming from that center field safety position. Great job reading Geno Smith's eyes. You just got to make the play. Catch it. Get that turnover. And it looks like West Virginia will go for it. They're one for three on fourth downs this season. Austin leans forward, and again, where they mark it will determine this one, but I think he's going to be a bit short. A 
Redshirt freshman Lauren Gorey with the tackle, and West Virginia is short. So, the Maryland D holds. You know, it's that area of the field, that, that gray area, where you don't know what to do. Here's a look at it, trying to go to the ground. We saw why he was stretching. The knee came down well short of that first yard marker. See him extending there. He's trying to reach, but that back knee definitely down. So Danny O'Brien on the field. He's averaged 300 yards passing over the course of the last five games. They go backwards on the carry there to pick it. You know, for Maryland, they definitely have gotten a little conservative with their play calling. Yeah, I haven't seen them try to run the ball this much. If I'm their offensive coordinator, Gary Croton, I'm trying to do the same things that West Virginia has done well. Short passes, get Danny O'Brien his confidence back. O'Brien just 47 yards passing and two interceptions. O'Brien dropping back. And there's a much needed completion and a first down. Inside the 45, Kerry Boykins with the reception. At a TD drop versus Miami. Did Boykins, the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia, but a nice grab there. An even, better way, an even better way to get his confidence. Let him complete a long one. <laughs> Good job to carry Boykins, moving the ball down the field. Crashing across the middle. Logan with his second career reception. He keeps the play alive. He's still on his feet. And Logan inside the 20. His first reception of the season for the long time, a very talented punt return tonight due to the suspensions of McCree and Tyler. This was a guy they needed to get touches, and once he gets in the open field, huge block coming across your screen by Justice Pickett, number 44, and Tony Logan. He's shown the capability to make plays in the punt return game. Get him the ball in the open. 32 yards, Adams in the backfield, O'Brien under center. O'Brien rolling to his left. Blocked. Terrence Garvin there to get in the face of O'Brien and Josh Taylor almost able to get an interception there. Terrence Garvin, the Baltimore native, had a huge game so far, had the interception earlier. Here comes the pressure. Danny O'Brien realizes it, tries to just throw it away. Somehow you got to find a way to get that ball out of bounds. That ball was in the air and another opportunity for West Virginia to get a turnover. Here's O'Brien's numbers through this stage. We approach two and a half left in the first half. Second and ten. O'Brien under duress throws this one to the end zone. Touchdown, Maryland! Kevin Dorsey! Second touchdown pass this season by O'Brien, 24th in his career. Here you see Danny O'Brien getting outside of the pocket, surveying the field, trusting his receiver. Kevin Dorsey, what a big play. We talked about the need for him to step up at the beginning of the game with two of their wide receivers being out. He's calling for the ball. Keith Dandy in coverage for West Virginia, and that is just an exceptional effort by quarterback and receiver. Dorsey has become Maryland's kind of go-to guy. He only had 15 grabs last season, two touchdowns, but in week one in the victory over Miami, eight receptions and 124 yards. 4-4-6 four, four, speed, 40-inch vertical. A guy who's really starting to come into his own. And I think any way you look at that, you see that as a touchdown. He secured, secured the ball. He had a foot in bounds with some room to spare. And that was just the lift this Maryland team needed. After further review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. I mean, Maryland was reeling a little bit. They were struggling. The crowd was kind of getting out of this game. And that was a huge lift they needed before halftime. Now they need to make sure they stop West Virginia in this two-minute drill. O'Brien, his first seven drives, just 42 yards passing. This drive, he had 70. <laughs> And he's at 112 for the afternoon and his first touchdown. But again, those two interceptions very costly to this program thus far. I like his composure. I like his resiliency. 
bouncing back. And now not only does he get his confidence back, but Gary Croton will have confidence to call plays. ESPNU is the home for passionate college football fans as our experts break down the top schools in the nation in a weekly three-hour special. Don't miss any of the unfiltered conversation about the hot topics in college football. The experts on ESPNU Tuesdays at 1 and 7. One of the hot topics will be Oklahoma, Florida State for sure. That one coming up a little bit later. I know you have a little bit of a, a slight investment into that game. <laughs> what, what are your quick thoughts as we approach kickoff on that one later tonight? Well, I think Landry Jones, if he's comfortable in the pocket, it's going to be a long day for Florida State. If Florida State can harass him, get him on his back, I think they've got a chance to pull off the upset. Maryland led 3-0. West Virginia then rattled off 24 consecutive points, and the Terps finally with their first touchdown of the afternoon. It is a 14-point advantage for West Virginia with 2.32 left in the first half. Austin inside his five. Austin 20, 25, and down at the 30. Here's a look at Danny O'Brien moving the ball down the field. Accurate pass to some of his playmakers. Very confident. Delivers Tony Logan a catchable ball where he can turn up field and make some moves in open space. And then the most, most important drive of the most important throw of the drive, the touchdown pass to Kevin Dorsey. Starting to pick up a little bit for Danny O'Brien. Starting to catch Geno Smith. Well, uh, Geno Smith has been in control all afternoon long, already over 200 yards through the air. Add to that total, a short reception of maybe five yards to Brown. Devon Brown, a transfer from Wake Forest University. He led Wake last year with 39 receptions and 302 receiving yards. Three wide outs to the left for Smith. They give it to Roberts. And Roberts with the first down and a little bit more. This is a huge possession for Maryland, both of them. Maryland has got to try to keep the momentum, which they have grasped now. If they want to keep this game tight, they have got to get the ball back in their offense's hands. At worst case, get out, get to halftime 24-10. Roberts with a gain of seven, setting up first and ten for Holgerson and company. Pressure handled very well by West Virginia. Flag on the play after the reception by Brown. There's a flag on the play. Holding defense number nine, 10 yard penalty, first down. Fourth penalty on Maryland this afternoon. We asked you via Twitter earlier today what uh, quarterback is going to win the battle today, and Dice15 is uh, giving Gino a vote. Ditto for Jimmy Glenn. Well, to this point, Gino clearly has the upper hand, but there's a whole half of football for Danny O'Brien to catch up. On first and ten, the give to Roberts. Roberts, the Freshman from Dunbar High School, Washington, D.C. area. Maryland's defense here is going to very much prevent, keep guys in front of them and chasing them with that run game. Tough pass and another completion to Austin. And that'll be enough to move the sticks. Before, earlier in the game, we saw Danny O'Brien showcase his, his arm strength, and Geno Smith not to be outdone. One has to the opposite side of the field, delivers a perfectly placed ball, and gets it out of bounds, stops the clock. 43 seconds left in the half. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. Sooner or later, they're going to have to take some shots at the end zone. Speaking of shots at the end zone, Austin in and out of his hands. Matt Robinson there to break up the reception.
Tavon Austin comes on a wheel, wheel route out of the backfield. Great protection. Geno Smith showing great touch once again, but number 40, Matt Robinson from Maryland. Great defense. Austin already over 100 yards receiving. Second and 10. Quick start. Really Milhouse. Uh, Milhouse thrown into the kicker's cage and out of bounds at the 25. Milhouse, a transfer from Duquesne, where he was a three-year starter at safety. And here he is playing wide receiver for a very prominent West Virginia program. You know, West Virginia is able to use that short passing game, but the clock here is definitely an issue for them. That's why they do have to start taking their chances. 29 seconds left, first and 10. Smith hit as he releases it. Flag on the play. McCartney, the intended receiver. Cameron Chisholm defending. And this will be an interesting call. Once again, Randy Etzel, I think, is making the case that, that ball was uncatchable. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Holding offense number 57. Pass interference, defense number 22. Penalties offset. It's a wash. So offsetting penalties, 23 seconds left now in the half. Take a look at the coverage downfield. I mean, that just looked to me like Cameron Chisholm, number 22, had the better body position. He's just running down the field. And McCartney was out of bounds as well. Maryland showing pressure. Austin wrapped up. Matt Robinson with the tackle. A loss of three. West Virginia has two timeouts left. Make that one timeout left. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell here with you. Thursday night, Randy Edsel releasing a statement that Quinton McCree and Ronnie Tyler, both of them starting wide receivers, would be suspended indefinitely. Campus spokesman said yesterday that Tyler's second degree assault charge came from an altercation in which Tyler punched a man in the presence of a police officer, then fled early Thursday morning. The punch took place outside of a 7-Eleven. And Randy Edsel has not been afraid to suspend players already. DJ Adams, the very talented sophomore running back, missed the first game of victory over Miami due to a suspension for violation of team rules. Tony Logan, one of the guys filling into that vacancy at the wide receiver spot. One grab, a good one for 22 yards. He's been very active with the punt return game, but well, Maryland needs to get him more involved. Second and 13 for the Mountaineers. 14 seconds left in this one. Until halftime, Smith, short drop, complete. Bailey will be short of the first down. The clock will continue to tick, and West Virginia will burn their final timeout. Demetrius Hartsfield with the tackle there for the Terps. You know, the thing that was interesting about that play is they threw a route towards the sideline hoping they could get the, the receiver out of bounds, then take maybe one more shot and call their timeout after that. You see Stedman Bailey, I give him credit for trying to make a touchdown, but he easily could have gotten out of bounds. And then you line up, you could have stopped the clock with about seven seconds. You could have taken one more shot at the end zone, even over the middle of the field, called timeout, and then kicked your field goal. But instead they get one less play. So Bittenkirk, the place kicker will come out. He's already connected from 35 yards. This one will be from, looks like, 34. And I think you have to view this as a su success for Maryland's defense, regardless of whether they make this field goal or not. And it's good. So Bittenkirk, two for two on the afternoon, and West Virginia will head to the locker room right now, sporting a 17-point advantage. 
and will receive the second half kick as well. So that's the end of the first half. West Virginia on top, 27 to 10. Now we send it back to the Sports Center U Studio with Dari and.